Without the information I'm about to tell you, you cannot plan a dive properly. It's just impossible. What is this key bit of information that some instructors don't even understand? Again, I am Turk, the scuba with Turk. And today, I'm going to teach you something you should have learned in your open water course when you were taught about dive planning. There is something that we teach through RAID. If you don't know about RAID, it's Dive RAID International. You can go to DiveRaid.com and check them out. It is the organization I teach for. And RAID specifically has us do this in our open water course. Because without the information I'm about to tell you, you cannot plan a dive properly. It's just impossible. Uh, it's basically a hope and a prayer, and that's not how we dive plan. Do I really look like a guy with a plan? What is this key bit of information that some instructors don't even understand? Well, it is surface air consumption and respiratory minute volume. I hear you. I hear you. Well, sir, what is that? Well. Let's start with surface air consumption, or sat, your sat rate. Surface air consumption is how much gas we're breathing at the surface in liters per minute. For those of you that aren't using metric, I'm sorry, diving with metric is just so much easier. And this is coming from an American. Now, how does that help us plan dives? Well, we can change that into RMV, or respiratory minute volume, which we're going to use at depth. It tells us how much gas we're breathing in, whatever depth we want to go to. So as you know, right now, we're currently sitting in one atmosphere. It is the Earth's atmosphere. And this is why metric is beautiful. As you go down every 10 meters, we are under one additional atmosphere. So at 10 meters, we're now under two. So one atmosphere for 10 meters, plus the Earth's atmosphere. At 20 meters, you're at three atmospheres, or ATMs. We are, let's say, at 18 meters. 18 meters is the maximum depth for most open water courses. At RAID, you're certified at 20 meters on that course. So if you're at 18 meters, how many ATMs are you under? How many atmospheres? It's not one atmosphere, because we're deeper than 10 meters. It's not three atmospheres, because we haven't hit 20 meters yet. Remember, again, it's one atmosphere for every 10 meters, plus the atmospheric surface, the Earth's atmosphere. So for 18 meters, you have the surface. Earth's atmosphere is one. At 10 meters, you're at two. But we're at 18, so 2.8 atmospheres. And how do we use this? How do we figure out what, these, what the sac rate is and what our RMV is? So let's go to the whiteboard, and we'll talk a little bit about the formula it looks more complicated than it actually is. Once we start doing this, once you start uh, understanding what numbers we're looking for, it's very easy to figure out. In my open water course, when I teach it, I actually use our whiteboard. And I put D1, D2, D3, and D4 on the whiteboard. And the students do the calculations and we put their sac rates for dive 1, dive 2, dive 3, and dive 4 on there. And you'll see, you know what? Let's save that till later. I'll tell you what we're going to see. The first thing I want to do is we need to figure out what our RMV is, our respiratory minute volume. So in order to do that, respiratory minute volume is pressure starting minus pressure ending multiplied by the volume of the cylinder that we're using, and then that number divided by the time. So for an aluminum 80 cylinder or an 11 liter aluminum cylinder, your volume is 11 liters. You could use 11.1, which is what it actually is, but we'll stick with 11. Nice, easy number to work with, and it adds some conservatism into our diving plan. Diving plan. So pressure starting. Typical cylinder is 200 bar, right? If you're going to do these calculations, you need to make sure that you're looking at your SPG before we get in the water. You should anyway. But double check it. Once you get in the water, check it again. Maybe the cylinder had heated up in the sun, you get in and now your 200 bar cylinder is really 195, somewhere around there 190. So make sure you get as accurate a number as you can. <clears throat> if you're diving in transmitters like I have on my cylinder, I have an accurate number on my shoe water. 
So we're going to check out what our starting pressure is. Then we're going to start out and check what our ending pressure is at the end of the dive. There are two ways to do this, really. So when we talk about RMV and how we figure that out, one thing you can do is you can go to a specific depth. Let's say you want to go to 10 meters. It doesn't matter what the depth is. It could be any depth. Pick a depth. And you can do a swim for 10 minutes. And you stay at that depth. So you check your SPG at the start of the swim. You do a swim, staying at that depth for 10 minutes. Check your SPG at the end of that 10-minute swim. Now you have a depth, a time, and the gas we've used. There's another way of doing it that you can use for the entire dive. It's not quite as accurate, but I have found through all the calculations I've done that it's really, really close. Um, and it's really great and good enough for dive planning. And you can use your average depth on your dive and the entire dive time. Let's say we start our dive with 200 bar and we finish our dive with 70 bar. So we've used 130 bar on the, on the dive. We know that. Well, that doesn't do us any good because we need to know what that is in liters, right? We need to know it in volume, not in pressure. So we're going to take that 130 bar that we used and multiply that by the cylinder size in liters. This is 11 liters. So we're going to take that 130 and multiply that by 11. So we take that number, multiply that by the volume, that gives us 1,430 liters of gas that we used on the dive. We need to take that and divide it by how long the dive was. So let's say our dive was 55 minutes. If it's 55 minutes, we take that 1,430, divide that by 55, and that gives us 26. 26 what? 26 liters per minute. So we know that at depth, we were breathing 26 liters per minute. Now we can't use that to plan because we need to change that number, which is technically our RMV, our respiratory minute volume, because that's the number of depth. We need to change that to our surface air consumption rate. That's the number we're going to use to plug into all our dive planning. How do we do that? Again, we can do a single swim at a depth, or you can look at your dive computer and say, oh, what was my average depth over that time of the dive? Now, if we're on a dive, and our average depth for that dive is 7.5 meters. So that's the average. Right? We went deeper than that, we were shallower than that, but over the entirety of the dive, it averages out to 7.5 meters. So how many atmospheres are we at at 7.5 meters? Well, we're not at 10, which would be two atmospheres, right? So what is it? Hoping you got this right. At seven and a half meters, we would be at 1.75 atmospheres. The Earth's atmosphere, not quite two, right? 1.75 atmospheres. So we take 27, divide that by 1.75 to get our sac rate. I'm going to use a calculator here. So 26 divided by 1.75 gives us a sac rate of 14.857 blah, 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 blah. So if I'm at 14.85, am I going to use 14.85 liters a minute for my dive planning? No, I'm not. So I don't need anything after the decimal point, right? Am I going to use 14? Well, that sounds great, but that's not how we dive plan. So we're going to use 15. We're going to round up. Again, adding a little bit of conservatism into our planning. 11 liter cylinder, it's actually 11.1, we're going to use 11. 14.8 uh, sac rate, we're going to call it 15. So now we can take that number. We have 15 liters a minute, we know we breathe to the surface. That is what we're going to use for our dive planning from now on. So now we want to do, let's say you're not open water certified. Let's say you're a deep dive. So you're certified down to 40 meters. And you want to do a dive to 38 meters, and you need to figure out how long your gas can last. Because when we're doing those deeper dives, we're going to be limited by two things, right? We're going to be limited either by our NDL, our no decompression limit, or we're going to be limited by our gas. So what is our limiting factor? If we're going to do a dive to 38 meters, and our sat rates of 15 liters per minute, we have to know how many atmospheres we're going to be under at 3.8 liters, or at 38 meters. So at 38 meters, I'm not going to tell you, I wasn't going to tell you, but 
I want you to make an educated guess. How many atmospheres are you under at 38 meters? I'll wait. Did you get it? 38 meters, we are at 4.8 atmospheres. Remember, one for every 10 meters plus the surface, and we're moving that decimal point over. So 4.8. If you said we were at 48 atmospheres, that's really, really deep. Deeper than I'm going to be able to go. Deeper than any other human is going to be able to go. 4.8. At 4.8 atmospheres, we're going to take that number and we're going to multiply that by our sac rate. So we're going to take what we're breathing at the surface and convert that into what we're breathing in liters per minute at depth. So again, handy dandy trusty calculator. So 15 liters per minute times 4.8 atmospheres means we're breathing 72 liters a minute. Okay, how does that help you dive plan? How much gas is in the cylinder? If we are going to assume for this example that we started with 200 mol, how much gas is in here in volume? Remember 72. So it's 11 liter cylinder times 200 bars. So the volume that it can hold by, multiplied by the pressure. And that gives you 2200 liters of gas total. Now if we divide 2200 liters of gas, respiratory minute volume that we figured out was going to be 72 liters per minute. That means the total for that is 30.55. 30.55 what? 30.55 minutes. So we're going to say our gas can last 30 minutes. However, that's if we breathe this cylinder dry and we're never going to breathe it dry, correct? That's right. Now when we're doing dive planning for deeper dives like that, there are some other considerations we have to take in, such as we have to plan for emergencies. What happens if my buddy has a catastrophic failure? How much gas is it going to take me and him to get to the surface safely? That's a big part of our dive planning. I'm not going to go into that in this video. Uh, but it's not just, hey, at 50 bar we make our way up. That's unacceptable. So first of all, we know we need to leave 50 bar in our cylinder. We're going to be at the surface with no less than 50 bar. So that only gives us 150 bar of gas to use on the dive before we come to the surface. So 150 bar times the volume, which is, that's right, 11 liters gives us 1,650 liters of gas. So we're going to divide that by 72. Oops, I have fat fingers. They're really fat. Well, you try losing weight in just your fingers. It's not easy. Now, that 30 minutes that we had originally, we said, we now have 22.9 minutes. So I'm going to call that 22 minutes. I'm not calling it 23. So we have 22 minutes of gas. Now that does not mean we can spend 22 minutes at 38 meters. If we spend 22 minutes at 38 liters, if we spend 22 minutes, bam, bam, bam. Calm down, get a hold of yourself. Please let me handle this. If we spend 22 minutes at 38 meters, that means at the end of that 22 minutes, we're at 50 bar. Can you get to the surface with just 50 bar in your cylinder from 38 meters? That's not what we're going to do. So we're going to plan differently. Obviously, the planning I'm talking about now is really for our open water divers. Uh, if we're going into deeper dives, again, we're going to talk about um, our, we're going to talk about possibly things like diving the rule of thirds, which really quickly is using a third of your cylinder to go out on the dive, so down and out, one third to come back up, and then one third is reserve that we don't ever touch. It's for emergency purposes only. Um, or we can talk about rock bottom gas planning. What is the minimum amount of gas that you're going to have in your cylinder that still allows you and a buddy to get to the surface safely in case of a catastrophic failure? Those are topics we talk about a little bit in the Advanced 35 course for RAID, but we definitely go into them in our Deep 40 course, as well as any, if you take the DECO 40 course, or um, as most people do, you skip over DECO 40 and go right to DECO 50. So that's going to be part of that gas planning there. 
But let's talk about your open water dive, right? So we have our sack rate. Our sack rate is a 23. All right, so our sack rate is 23. We're going to do a dive to 18 meters. Sorry. Our sack rate is a 23 liters a minute in the surface. We're going to do a dive to 20 meters. And the atmospheres are? Uh, that's right, we're in three atmospheres at 20 meters. So, at 23 liters a minute, times three, the atmospheres we're under, this is going to give us our, take our sac rate and turn it into a respiratory minute volume. The answer is 69. <laughs> if we keep the 50 bar in the cylinder, we're not going to use that. Remember, that gives us 1,650 liters. divided by 69 tells us we get 23.9. That means we can do a 30 meter dive. Sorry, we can do a 20 meter dive. And essentially we can stay there for 23 minutes. But that's gonna take us all the way down to 50 bar. Now the answer is 23.9, <clears throat> but we're not gonna do 24. We wanna never use that 50 bar. That's gas that we should be in the cylinder at the surface. So that tells me that I need to leave the bottom well before 20 minutes. Well, what is our NDO? What is our no decompression limit at 30 meters? If you're using air and using standard dive tables, rather than using some other things like changing gradient factors, which can be a whole other talk later, but that means that our NDL, our no decompression limit, 20 minutes. In this instance, our limiting factor, because we can actually stay down, if we wanted to, all the way down to 50 bar, we don't want to do that. We're going to add some conservatism, conservatism in here. We could, the NDL is 20 minutes, so we have to come up before 20 minutes, right? We're never going to hit our NDL. I like to tell my divers, stay between two, if it gets down, if your NDL gets between somewhere between five or drops down to two, and we need to start making our way back up. Two gives us some time to solve an emergency. And then as we come up, we're going to be clear and everything's going to be good. But let's call it five minutes. So really, we have 15 minutes that we can spend at that depth. Yeah? Safely. And then we're going to start making our way back up. As we go back up, we're using less gas. Right? So we can make our way back because we're under less pressure. So for me, if I'm dive penning and dive to 30 meters, and I see, okay, this is how much gas I have. I can use up to 23 minutes on my dive, but that leaves me at 50 bar. My NDL is 20. If I throw in some conservatism in there, if I leave my bottom, my, make my bottom time 15 minutes, I should be able to slowly work my way up and get to the surface and still have 50 bar on the cylinder at the end of the dive, including doing my safety stuff. Now again, as you get into the raid, uh, deep 40 cores, we will take into consideration how much gas you use at every step of the way. So how much gas you use on your descent, that is one figure. How much gas you're using on, at your bottom time, so at your depth, that's another figure. How much gas you're using on your ascent, so coming up into the water column to your safety stop. And then how much gas you're using at the safety stop. And we take all of those numbers and figure out the exact total of gas we're going to be using. Raid Deep 40, if you're interested in those kinds of things, uh, you can go to DiveRaid.com, create an account there, just register an account, and then once you've registered your account, you're going to go up to the very top where it says free e-learning, click on that, go down to the Deep 40 course, click enroll now. You don't have to pay anything, it is free. You can read through the PDFs, you can even take the quizzes. If you want to take the course, do not pay anything. Contact me, Eric Prano Dive, and I'm in Bali. And then I'll walk you through the process of taking that RAID Deep 40 course. So that's how we figure out our surface air consumption based on our RMV on a dive. If you have any questions about this, please let me know down in the comments. I hope this was informative. I want to do something a little bit different, give you guys some more knowledge. I go into this really in depth in my open water course. We talk about this on every dive, um, before the dive and after the dive as well. So if you're interested in doing the Open Water 20 course with me, 
come here to Prana Dive. Again, we are in Ahmed Bali. Uh, you can contact me through here on YouTube. You can, you can email me at info at pranadive.com. That's P-R-A-N-A dive.com, which will be down here somewhere. Um, or you can hit me up on my own Instagram, which is scuba with Turk, or the Prana Dive Instagram, which is prana underscore dive underscore Ahmed. All that stuff will be down in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure that you like, subscribe, hit that bell so you get notifications, uh, share this with your friends and family. We here at Prana Dive believe in safe diving, and you're not diving safely if you're not doing proper gas planning. And that's just the bottom line. Jumping in the water and saying we're going to come up with 50 bar on our cylinders, not proper gas planning. So please learn this stuff. It is very important um, and it will help you as you start working your way up into the higher levels of dive courses, advanced, deep, maybe you get into tech diving. All of these things are going to become very important in those levels of diving. Um, and so it's just as important in our open water recreational diving. All right, now that we understand Saccharate and RMV, I said earlier, there's something that you're going to find uh, as you're, if you're a new diver or maybe you don't dive very often, so you don't get to dive as frequently as, say, a dive pro. And what my divers in the water course find is on each dive, the more comfortable we get, the more relaxed we are, the sac rate's going to lower. Eventually, it's going to get to a point where it plateaus off. Don't worry. Keep diving. Because then, it's going to drop eventually. It may take three months, may take six months, no idea. It's based on each individual person. But eventually it's going to drop again. And then it's going to bottom out, and that is going to be your sac rate based on your physiology, and it's not going to change. So keep diving. Pay attention to your sac rates, pay attention to your gas at all times. Thanks again for joining us here at Prana Dive. If you have any suggestions for videos you'd like to see, let me know. I'm open to suggestions as always. Until next time, safe diving. We'll see you in the water.